Hello, Clapham Grand. I think it's important uh, before I begin that I just say this up top. Uh, I'm not secretly Sam Smith. <laughs> I know. I'm just another big face queer. And I am queer. <laughs> yes. Hip, hip, he, they. Hip, hip, he, they. That's right, I don't like to live in the Amanda binary. Um, she's the man, but sometimes she's not. <laughs> but uh, people do often think I am Sam Smith, like it happens a lot. And I've started like thinking about like how many of my poor life choices are affecting their reputation. <laughs> like how many times has someone been on a night out and the next day like talking to their housemates like, oh my God, last night in the club. <laughs> Sam Smith was there, <laughs> and they'd like passed out, pissed himself, and K-holed in the corner. <laughs> and then like later on, they were like slurping pizza off the floor with their flaccid cock out. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that one was Sam Smith. So. <laughs> but like, it has been like quite intense, like people genuinely mistaking your identity for like an A-list celebrity. So. I decided that I uh, need to get, like, therapy. <laughs> Instead of just screaming into the void, um, which is what my ex used to call rimming me. <laughs> just a bit of tongue-in-cheek humour, don't mind me? <laughs> but no, so, like, uh, I got a new therapist, and, uh, you know, like, I knew the moment that I needed, like, a therapist was... I was lying down, and my cat was, like, sat on my chest, and I was stroking him. And then a bit of drool fell from his mouth and went into my mouth. <laughs> and the first thought I had was, okay, daddy. <laughs> and it's like, I need to get therapy. <laughs> but it's like, I need to get laid. <laughs> but like, it's good. Like, we talk about all the important things like queerness and like trauma and like what happened to all those people that got mustaches tied to their fingers. <laughs> Like, where are they now? <laughs> Does anyone in this room have that tattoo? Because there were so many of you and now you're gone. <laughs> you're all gone. <laughs> but like, it's good to talk to someone as well. Um, uh, I'm a triple threat. Uh, anxiety, depression, IBS. <laughs> <laughs> and like, queer life is hard. Like, I remember when I came out to my dad, I was like, dad, I'm gay. And he was like, look, Dan, I don't care what you are as long as you're happy. And it's like, okay, thanks, Dad, but plot twist, I'm not. <laughs> so what do we do now, Dad? <laughs> but you know, like, therapy is going well. Uh, the one thing that I'm finding difficult is that my therapist is gay and he's hot. So, like, I feel like I'm in a porno the entire time. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but, like, talking about past trauma whilst, like, eye-fucking somebody? <laughs> Wait, that's most of you on a first date. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> but, like, I'm just there, like, flirting with this man. I'm, like, sat there being, like, yeah, I guess, like, when he left, that gave me really bad PTSD. <laughs> But I feel like I'm like trying to find this narrative because of porn. Like because we've been so like indoctrinated by porn that we're trying to find these like porn moments. No, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm constantly trying to find a porn moment. And like I feel like even this will happen because like my entire sex education was literally from secretly watching Sex Etra while my parents were asleep upstairs. <laughs> my people are in, my people are here. <laughs> But like, it just like filters into everything, you know? Like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'd love to have like 10 guys with like 12 inch cocks come around and fuck me. But in reality, no, I don't. <laughs> and then it's awkward because they're already round. <laughs> we have a WhatsApp group. <laughs> or like, you know when you like, you think you're like a fetish and you're like, you're in bed with someone and you're like, choke me, choke me. And then he does it and you're like, oh, excuse me, sir. That's actually very uncomfortable. <laughs> 
But also, like, porn is so unrealistic, like, obviously. Like, I was watching this porno the other day, and this guy, like, walks into a cafe, and, like, he uh, orders a coffee, and he's flirting with a barista, and then he sits down, he drinks the coffee, and then they end up having sex, which is, like, so unrealistic. Like, let me tell you what I'm not doing when I've drank coffee. <laughs> Putting a dick in my ass. <laughs> Baby, I can stare at a flat white and it's like a flash mob down there. <laughs> like unexpected movement en masse. And yes, I think I've got IBS. And by that I mean I be sad because I keep shitting myself. <laughs> I did actually like kind of have a porn moment recently. So it was like three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was high smoking weed and I was ordering like a trough of McDonald's from Uber Eats because self care. And you know how like, you can see like the picture of the guy like on the app, the delivery man? <laughs> and he was like, kind of cute. <laughs> so I was like, this is it. Like, this is the moment. <laughs> so like I go down to like down the stairs and I open the door and like it's a vibe straight away. Like we're like full eye contact, like smiling. I'm like, hey, he's like, how are you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like take this real heavy bag of McDonald's from his hands. But then like he just goes. I'm like, fuck, like maybe that was the moment. But... Then, the next day, it's like three o'clock in the morning, I'm high smoking weed, I'm ordering a trough of McDonald's from Uber Eats because I need help. <laughs> and it's the same delivery man. So I'm like, this is the universe, like, this is gonna happen. So like, I go down the stairs, I've got like a dressing gown on, I like, open it out so let the girls breathe. <laughs> I like, open the door and like, it's already a vibe. And he's like, his like, whole face like, lights up. And I'm, he's like, hey, it's you again. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, how's it going? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and like, I take the food from him and like, our hands touch and make me both smile. And then he's like, uh, you're, and I'm like, yeah? And then he like, looks me dead in the eyes and he's like, you're a hungry man, aren't you? <laughs> And that was my porn moment. <laughs> I just like shut the door. I couldn't even eat the food for like two minutes, but then I ate it all because I was high. <laughs> but like, I feel like I'm also like trying to find these things more desperately at the moment because I haven't had good sex for like a long time. Like I'm horny. Like I'm this close away from like standing in my bathroom and like looking in the mirror and saying Candyman three times just so there could be another man in the room. <laughs> Like, I don't care if you're gonna kill me, just fuck me first. <laughs> but like, knowing the universe and how it treats me, it would be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I think like, I'm just like jaded. Like, I'm tired from like dating men. Like, it's aging me. Like, it's giving like, old soul tight hole. <laughs> Which I will be making into merch. <laughs> But like, I'm just like so sick of men. Like, I guess like the gift of being gay is that like, I don't have the same like societal time pressures to have kids and have a family. But like the curse of being gay is like, I have to fuck men <laughs> and they are the worst. Like, I, I'm also like so tired of like, especially like straight girls, straight girls coming up to me and being there like, oh, all the best ones are gay. Where? Literally where? <laughs> Every man I've ever dated is an asshole. But like, I'm an asshole. But you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I also kind of like, there's a reason that I've not been having so much sex at the moment as well, because uh, this cat that I live with, <laughs> I live with this cat, his name is Brian, he's huge. He's like a Maine Coon, like he's massive. I'm not even sure he's a cat, he could just be like a man dressed as a cat for father's rights. <laughs> but Brian is a gay cat, and I know he's a gay cat, because every time I've had sex with somebody, and like we've orgasmed, that cat is outside my door, like meowing and scratching like mad. Like he's like out there being like, come, is there come in there? And like, that is his voice. Like, I feel like, you know in Oliver Twist, where they sing that song, and it's like, um, who will buy this wonderful morning? Okay, well. 
No, but in that song, there's like a guy in that song, and he's like a big guy, and he's like, knives, knives to grind. <laughs> that is Brian's voice. <laughs> so like, I've just had mediocre sex with this man, and I've got this dad-sized cat outside my door, <laughs> literally singing, come, human, come. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> like, here I am living with fag puss. But like, I want to have more sex, like I do. Like, I want my life to be like a rom-com, but like no rom and loads of cum. <laughs> and like, I want to like be more liberated, you know? Like, I feel like I had a Catholic upbringing and like, I feel like there's still like a residue of shame. And like, I just find it so mad that like, because I went to church as a kid, like I can still feel shame about things. Cause like, what is church? Like really, what is church? Like church is like a book club where no one's read the book. <laughs> except one person who stands at the front showing off. <laughs> that is it. Baby, no one's read the Bible. <laughs> but also, like, I want to start getting, like, a higher level of man. Like, not higher level, not, like, better, but, like, richer. You know? <laughs> like, I'm so tired of just dating guys that just, like, smoke weed and don't tell me how they feel. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to be associated with people in high places, not just high people in places. <laughs> so like, I'm going to leave you with this story. So I've been like a little bit more like minded on trying to find an adventure. Like, say yes, be open to it. So the other night I was on the bus, like a night bus. I was going home, and it was like the lower deck, uh, the two seats facing two seats. And I'm just like sat there. I've got like a True Crimes podcast in. Okay, it's a Netflix original. <laughs> I was giving Netflix original series. I'm just sat there, true crime's in, and there's like a cute guy opposite me. And like, we keep like catching each other's eyes. And then like, it gets a bit more intense. I'm like really looking at each other. And then we're like doing more like gesturing, like I'm like stroking my leg and he's like touching his crotch. <laughs> but like the, the entire time I've got this like true crimes podcast in my ear and it's like, and then she found a knife in her house. <laughs> which actually kind of made it a bit more hard, to be honest. And then things get like a bit more intense. Like he comes and sits next to me and like I'm kind of touching him, he's touching me. But like kind of secretly because we're on like a night bus full of drunk blokes. And then basically it's his stop and he gets up and like gestures for me to follow him. And I'm like, fuck it, like I want this adventure. Like I'm just gonna say yes. So I get off the bus, uh, we haven't spoken at all. And like, uh, still got the like podcast in my ear and it's like, uh, little did she know he was a serial killer. <laughs> and then like it dawns on me and I'm like, have I just stepped into my own true crimes podcast? <laughs> like in my head, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, what's his name? What am I doing? Why am I so rock hard? <laughs> and like, I find myself like walking behind him. And I'm kind of like sizing him up to be like, if he was trying to kill me, I'm bigger than him. So I think I've got him, which was kinky as hell. But then we go back to his, we have sex, it's fine. But he comes before I come. And like when he comes, he comes a lot. It's like I'm a victim in Pompeii. <laughs> I'm just there like, no. <laughs> but then the worst part is like after he's come, he just rolls over and falls asleep. And I'm like, no. Like, this is like the literal acti like anti-climax of this adventure. I'm just like lying in bed, I'm like thinking about that famous quote from the prophet Nora Jones. Um, she says, I don't know why I didn't come. I don't know why I didn't come. But I'm just like lying there while this man's snoring next to me. And I'm like, I have not spent like 18 years in the closet and then spent like 10 years trying to be the best queer person I could be to then just become a straight woman. <laughs> Thank you, I've been done why.